Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 equals 35 divided by the quantity 6x plus 5 squared. So we're going to be finding the x values, real and complex, all the solutions. First of all, let's take a look at this equation. What kind of equation are we going to be getting from here? If you cross multiply, by the way, I'm going to be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. I'll go ahead and use cross multiplication first. 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 multiplied by this expression. And we can go ahead and square this. That's going to give us 36x squared plus 60x plus 25. And the product is going to equal 35. If you distribute, let's take a look at which terms we're going to be getting from here. First of all, you're going to get 108x to the fourth power. To get x cubed, you're going to multiply these two and these two things. So that's going to give us 180 minus 180, that's going to be 360 x to the third power. To get x squared, there are actually three ways to get it. You can get it this way, which is 75, and then you can get it with this, these two, which is 72. And finally, multiply 5x by 60x, that's going to give you 300 x squared. If you add those all up together, these two are going to give you 147, 447 x squared. This way, I'm kind of avoiding combining like terms. I'm doing it as we go. And to get x, there's actually two ways to get it. You can multiply 5x by 25, which is going to give you 125. Or you can multiply 2 by 60x, which is going to give you 120x. And that'll make 245x. Finally, you're going to multiply these two things to get 50. But then we will subtract 35. That's going to become 15. Do we have a common factor? First, I was thinking, oh, maybe 3 is a common factor because this is divisible by 3, this is divisible, this is divisible, this is divisible, but this one isn't. Because 245 is 49 times 5, obviously. It's divisible by 7, but the others aren't, so we're kind of stuck here with this nice quartic. Sure, right? This is so nice. The numbers are pretty big, and obviously this is the first method, very brute forcey. You don't want to do this, unless you have to. So, do we have an alternative? Absolutely. We do have an alternative. I think about this, this problem, since it appears on my channel, uh, this is kind of like a competition level problem. And this probably appeared on a math contest. I, I can't tell which one, but uh, I've seen problems like this before. And uh, there's a certain way you can do these problems, a special way to approach it so that everything becomes a lot easier. Some people call these problems contrived, but you know, they're not real life problems. So Hopefully, nobody cares. So how do you approach this differently? Okay, the trick is not to expand. So we're going to still cross multiply. You probably noticed something about this polynomial, uh, 3x squared plus 5x plus 2, because it's special. And we're going to multiply. I'll talk about it in a little bit. And this equals 35. Now, the second method focuses on something special i'll show you and we're going to use substitution but first notice that this expression is factorable how do i know that because i added the three and the two and trust me i didn't know the solution beforehand three plus two equals five and we've talked about this a lot remember when the sum of the coefficients of the even powers equals the sum of the coefficients of odd powers that means x equals negative 1 is a solution. If the sum of the coefficients is 0, then x equals 1 is a solution. You should definitely know these if you're dealing with polynomials, which is what we have here. And by factor theorem, this implies if x equals negative 1 is a solution, then x plus 1 is a factor, right? And that's given by factor theorem. Awesome. So we can factor it accordingly, and obviously the other factors is going to be 3x plus 2, right? I mean, you could factor it any way you want. You can even solve this as a quadratic equation and get to the factoring that way. doesn't matter. No big deal. Uh, however you do, you'll end up factoring it. And I want to write the x plus 1 first. There's a good reason. I'll show you. And then kind of like uh, ordering the um, leading coefficients from smallest to largest. Notice that this is 1, this is 3, and this is a 6. And by the way, when I say this, this, let me show you. 
this is 1x, this is 3x, and this is 6x. Make sense? Okay. We're going to take advantage of that. So let's go ahead and call this u. How about that? You can use another variable. You can use another variable, but I'm going to use u. Okay. Now, what about 3x plus 2? Think about it. If you triple u, you get 3x plus 3, which is 3x plus 2 plus 1. So, uh, 3u is going to give you this plus 1. So, if you subtract, this will be 3u minus 1. Get it? Okay, hopefully. And then, if you calculate 6u, that's going to give you 6x plus 6. And then from here, 6x plus 5, I'm going to show it a little differently. It's going to be 6u minus 1. Because notice that 6x plus, 6x plus 5 is 1 less than 6x plus 6. Make sense? Great. So we're going to be using these two things. Uh, let's go ahead and replace this with 6u minus 1. You might still be questioning, how does this help? You'll see u, we'll see in a little bit. Okay. So this is what I got after doing my first substitution. Wait a minute, did you say first? Are you going to do another one? Yes, I will do another substitution because substitution is awesome. And this problem is awesome because of that. Now, how do you use substitution one more time? Well, first, you have to do this. You've got to multiply these two together. It's going to give you 3u squared minus u. And kind of put it in parentheses. And then expand this one. If you haven't expanded it before, now is the time to expand, okay? It's going to give you 36u squared minus 12u plus 1. Whoever came up with this problem was a very genius person because this is just amazing. I don't know if you've seen it or if you see it now. Hopefully you do. <laughs> this is what it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and call this t and this will be 12t. Do you see that? Because if you multiply 3 times 12, you get 36. Notice that. If you multiply 3 by 12, you get 36. If you multiply 1u by 12, you get 12u. Of course, the signs are preserved, so we're good. Awesome. Now, this turns our equation into a quadratic at the end, right? Which is awesome. Let's go ahead and simplify this. We're going to get 12t squared plus t equals 35 or minus 35 equals 0. Now, this problem can be solved in so many different ways. Quadratic formula is one way to do it. Let's use it. B equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 1 minus 4ac, but uh, c is negative, so we can kind of put a plus sign there. Multiply 12 times 35 times 4, which is uh, 140 times 12, which is 1,680. And I think that 1,000, I'm hoping... <laughs> that 1,681 is a perfect square. That'll be perfect, right? Let's see. And we can kind of guess. It looks like 41 squared to me, but I can kind of show you why that's the case because remember, this was, um, what was it? 12 times 40 times 10, right? So we could probably do this. Uh, we could call this y. This will be y plus two and this will be y plus four. And when you multiply these, you're going to get something nice. I don't know. But I'm just guessing this will be, there's probably a way to get there. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply um, 41 by 41. And I, I'm hoping to get this one. This is 41. This is 164. And yes, success. Yay. So this will become negative 1 plus minus 41 divided by 24. And if you separate this, uh, you're going to get negative 1 plus 41 divided by 24. That'll be 40 divided by 24. If you can uh, divide everything by 8, you're going to get 5 over 3 from here. And the other solution is going to give us negative 1 minus 41. I don't think that's going to be that nice, but negative 42. And you can kind of simplify that into negative 21 over 12. Okay. Good enough. All right. Now, we got these two solutions, but these are the t values. From the t values, you need to go to the u values, and then from the u values, you need to get to the x values. You get the idea? Okay, t is equal to 3u squared minus u. And now if t is equal to 5, let me just do one of these because the, the others are similar. And from here, you're going to get 3u squared minus u minus 5 thirds equals 0. Let's go ahead and multiply everything by 3. 9u squared minus 3u minus 5 equals 0. Again, use the quadratic formula. Uh, 
negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 9, plus uh, 4 times uh, 9 times 5, that will be 180. 189 is not a perfect square, I don't think so, right? It's not, uh, so we're going to have to, but it's factorable. It's actually divisible by 9 because it's 9 times 21, right? And we can kind of write this, 21 is going to have to stay, or we can write it as 3 plus minus 3 times the square root of 21 divided by 18, and that can be simplified a little bit, 1 plus minus root 21 over 6. Awesome. That's u. Let's go ahead and take one of those values, and we'll proceed with the x. And what was the relationship? x plus 1 is equal to u. Oh, that was easy. x plus 1 is equal to u, so x is u minus 1. <laughs> Great. So we're just going to subtract 1 from these. So x can be 1 plus root 21 over 6 minus 1, which will be negative 5 plus root 21 over 6. Or x can be 1 minus root 21 over 6 minus 1, and that will be negative 5 minus root 21 over 6. So obviously, these two solutions we can write as negative 5 plus minus root 21 over 6. Of course, this is a cortex, so there are two other solutions that are going to come from here, but I took the easy route and went with the positive solutions. And you can hopefully do the rest because the rest is left as an exercise for you, right? If I do everything, then nothing is left for you to do, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.